I want you to picture this scenario. It was a hot summer day, and you decided to head to the beach with some friends for a weekend getaway. It was a busy day, as a lot of people had the same bright idea you had. You were out swimming in the sea when you decided to dive deeper and get a closer look at some fish. As you resurfaced, a reckless teenager driving a speedboat accidentally came too close as you were coming up for a breath of air. Unfortunately, your wrist got caught in the blades of the propeller, and your hand was severed. What did you do? The lifeguards found your hand and put it on ice, and you were immediately taken to the nearest hospital. You arrived in stable condition, waiting for an OR to take you in. A nurse informed you that they were unable to reattach your hand, because there were no plastic surgeons specialized in microsurgery nearby. Now this was a case in the 90s, but it doesn't have to be the case now, because of telesurgery. Imagine a world where physical distance is no longer an issue with regards to medical care, where surgeons can take their skills across the world in an instant. This is the aim of remote surgery or telesurgery. Telesurgery is the use of technology to create the presence of a surgeon when in reality the person conducting surgery may be half a world away in a different location using a high-speed internet connection to work on a patient. It involves the use of robotic arms that physically interact with the patient while the surgeon controls it from a different location. So how does it work? One of the first instances of this technology's use was in Beijing, China, to perform a neurosurgery on a 58-year-old patient 600 kilometers away from the surgeon's location. First, an MRI scan was done on the patient's head, and the patient local cameras were calibrated accordingly and tested for accuracy. The MRI images and calibration information was then sent to the surgeon. Using this information, the surgeon was then able to mark points of interest, access points, outlines of a tumor, all from the information sent from the patient's location. After the surgeon was comfortable with the calibration, the local nurses fixed the patient's head based on the surgeon's specifications. After that, the surgeon began the operation with the assistance of a local surgeon on site in case anything were to go awry. There are usually two cameras utilized throughout the operation, global and local. The global camera provides a top-down view of the entire operation, while the local camera operates from the surgeon's perspective. Dr. Anvari is a laparoscopic surgeon located in Hamilton at St. Joseph's Healthcare, who frequently utilizes the method of telesurgery to operate on his patients hundreds of kilometers away in North Bay, Ontario. There seems to be no issues with regards to lag times or internet connection as these surgeries are performed. Telesurgery is promising because it has several advantages when compared to traditional surgical methods. With telesurgery, as we have mentioned, it would eliminate the issue of location. We could provide potentially life-saving medical aid to remote areas and areas impacted by poverty and a lack of medical care. The military is even considering designing a portable operating room with this technology implemented. Another point to consider is that telesurgery increases the use of robot-assisted surgery, which is frequently used nowadays. Robots can be used for hip replacements, kidney transplants, and even coronary artery bypass, thus proving their versatility. Furthermore, the robotic arms used in telesurgery offer a greater degree of movement, dexterity, and accuracy than human hands, ultimately translating to greater surgical precision and success. Not only would telesurgery offer greater accuracy, but it would do so in a minimally invasive manner and limit physical damage, since robotic systems can translate a surgeon's hand movement into very precise, small motions. This reduces average post-operative hospital stays, which also saves medical costs. This is already happening with types of surgery, such as laparoscopic surgery. Basically, telesurgery exhibits the same benefits of robotic surgery, with the added advantage of disregarding physical location, which vastly increases the availability of specialists to treat patients. Although telesurgery has immense potential, it is difficult to ignore the massive financial costs associated with it. It would require the implementation of expensive equipment in at least two locations. Furthermore, the use of regular telecommunication lines is not very feasible over vast distances because currently the average bandwidth is unable to support the rapid transmission of information that is needed for remote surgical operations to function accurately. Other limitations include the need for additional training for highly specialized surgeons to be able to manipulate the complex controls without tactile feedback 
while being visually handicapped. Theoretically, telesurgery can facilitate a team of surgeons from anywhere to work on the same patient, but there are hidden costs that have yet to be fully addressed. A remote area that cannot afford specialists may in fact have trouble affording all the equipment to have a successful telesurgery. In rural areas, the high-speed bandwidth needed for a good connection in telesurgery is often not met. Governments should start to implement public policies that help establish these bandwidth speeds necessary for telesurgery. It's been suggested that a Delphi team could be established, which would be a group of people who examine the limitations of telesurgery and come up with international policies that everyone would abide by to make this surgery accessible. There are many countries that currently have provider resistance at the moment, such as Ethiopia and Iran. By watching this video, you can see that telesurgery is not to be feared, but in fact can be the solution to many surgical problems in remote areas. Future Telesurgery is also trying to incorporate tactile feedback that allows surgeons to experience the tension and pull of actual tissue, as opposed to just having the visual information on a screen. Studies show that surgeons who experience tactile sensation during telesurgery are more efficient in their surgeries than in surgeries with just visual feedback. These new systems open the door to more variety and more complicated types of surgery, such as cornea repairs that were recently done by the Da Vinci system. By establishing public policies, we can train more medical professionals to become operators of telesurgery, and recent studies have shown that having more trained operators in the room can help improve errors that occur from lagging. International policy would also help to bring telesurgery to all countries and allow these innovations to move forward in all areas of the world.